like they don't have any evidence to show we haven't been there or that it's been staged or whatever. No, well, it's the same as me. I don't have any evidence and there's nothing that I can experience myself that would give me that certainty. So I have to say that it's a leap of faith then if I believe an authority or Definitely. somebody else telling me something. And I think that's okay as long as that discernment is made and understood to be different from what natural science is. I mean, you know. it's clear that everyone is uh, subjective to what they experience and believe. Sure. So. Sure. Obviously, everyone should have their own opinion on how things go on and how everything surrounding them affects them. I mean, there's people who believe uh, really hard in uh, I don't know a higher existence or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's not like I don't believe or like I believe or everyone has their own beliefs and what they do uh, defines what, I mean, they do what they think is right by them. Yeah, but do you, do you would you not, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a direct realist, which means that, you know, it's I'm very, as well. for me it's all very much about, you know, natural science and that that has to be the basis of our knowledge. Uh, um, and that anything that contradicts that um, is is either going into the realms of belief, which could be religion, huh? um, believing in a higher god or, or something. Religion um, is like a totally different subject. I mean, it's yeah, totally but do you think science and religion? And do you think science, religion sometimes have uh, many things in common? Because you have they to believe might and have, have faith. It's not really a subject I'm really, uh, let's say, well versed in. Yeah. I mean, I prefer more uh, science <laughs> than <laughs> religion. So absolutely, I wouldn't really have uh, the necessary tools to explain what religion is or how it affects or what. It does. But you would agree though that uh, you know, religion does require a leap of faith and a belief Obviously. without being able Obviously. to experience a God without or without any whatever. proof for right. it. Yeah. Um, and if science is also going down the path of giving us things that all we can do is believe or have a leap of faith or trust in authority, that that has to be different from real natural science that we can observe and repeat and measure and test ourselves? Should be. That, 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 you know, yeah, I think I mean, that's a, a Yeah, by definition it be sounds <laughs> Yeah. So, so again, you know, for me it comes back to the fact that if we have things, facts that and, and they, I can argue against the hypothesis, but I can't do it the other way around. That's a logical fallacy to take a hypothesis and argue against facts. That that's not scientific. Not, yeah. yeah, indeed. Um, so, and again, I can only come back to the fact that you know, if I'm supposed to be on a spinning space ball with water defying nature, then that contradicts for me what is a natural fact of life. Yeah. Um, so that's why I find it now very hard to believe what I'm um, being told and, I, and you know I think one of the things that we're trying to do is just to help people or to, to get people to think critically. We're all natural scientists really um, and we don't need specialist equipment to see the facts of life. Yeah. But I think for example uh going on about the water argument uh, for example clouds and rain yeah why does the rain fall on the earth's surface and not in the atmosphere for example well if i give you a, um, a helium balloon, again if i give you a helium balloon and i let go then it flies up into the air so yeah. is, is that's defying gravity or why is it flying upwards it's flying in the air, but uh, it's because of to a certain point. It's because it's going upwards. It's not falling down because it's lighter. 
because it's to do with pressure and density and volume of its mass of is substance. lighter so it's not as affected by the gravity as other objects but it defies gravity everything else gets pulled down water has to large bodies of water have to get held down by gravity right it's denser than helium so there is an explanation about why things fall that has to do with pressure and density and volume Perhaps. right for example oil in water so, so do we need gravity to explain why things fall? And do we need gravity to explain why things go up? Because well, it depends really, but uh, mostly I think everything could be uh, defined or uh, affected. Uh, I mean, it is, everything is affected by gravity, so... Um, have you heard of the equivalence principle? Not exactly. No. The equivalence principle is um, uh, a mathematical or a physics um, a principle that basically equates gravity, the F equals G, M, M, you know, divided by R, um, with the the principle of acceleration in a free fall, so F equals MA, so it's, it's equivocating those two statements. Um, which More like terminal velocity? Yes, it's, it's exactly, if you like, what Newton's theories were. Huh? And nowadays it's called basically the equivalence principle where gravitation is equated to the natural phenomenon, the natural phenomena of, of substance um, falling through mediums at a certain rate depending on the relative density yes. and the relative pressure. So there is a... Reach an equilibrium, yeah, so, which so, they cannot go faster or... So there is an alternative explanation which has been equivocated, yeah, equivalence principle to the gravity. Nowadays, I think most of us are taught gravity and that's the standard answer that we usually hear. But there is another answer for why things fall down and up and go up. Which is? The, exactly that. How different substances <laughs> fall through different mediums depending on their relative density to each other. So you are, you know, you're going you're gonna to hit the earth and you can't go any yeah, further. But, you know, for um, example, a helium a rock rise. isn't, I mean, this applies to fluids. No, to all substances. An object through a fluid. Yes, if an object, if you go into water, yeah, but, then it's uh, buoyancy, it's the Archimedes principle. Yeah. It explains everything, you don't need to invoke gravity. So, what, what I'm just trying to say is that in physics there are things that have been equivocated to appear to be the same thing, although the two separate concepts and one can exist quite fine without the other. So gravity is a mathematical theory that hasn't ever been necessarily proven to be correct. I mean, they're still finding, they're still looking for gravitational waves and gravitational particles, right? There's a lot of uh, theories that have been uh, discovered, proven, tested, and there's still a lot that hasn't been discovered and still has to be discovered. Can I give you another example? So when, when we here on Earth, um, we live in a pressure system, right? Um, with different layers of, of fluids and gas all the way up until, well, wherever it stops, we don't quite know. But what we're told is that those layers and those pressure systems get less and less and less until you hit the vacuum. Yeah. Whereas, you know, anything that we see on Earth, if you have two different pressures um, or two different substances, whether it's fluid or glass, they need a solid separate barrier, otherwise they will equilibrate. So, you know, one gas will mix with the other. Um, and yes. if you have a vacuum, and no solid separation barrier, then the vacuum of space should theoretically suck everything off the Earth, right? Unless 
and the word is probably going to be gravity is invoked again as the Not explanation for why that doesn't uh, happen. For example, uh, why, why do there's you think gravity on the moon or on Mars or whatever. So again, you're making an assumption that these things are physical objects that you can land on. Yes, why not? Whereas I deny that because I again have no measurable testable evidence and only because 500 people told me I can't, I can't take that. It's not like uh, I've been told that it exists and that's why I believe it exists. It's just I see it in the sky and I what do you see? Right now, not right now, obviously. <laughs> the world you see. Night. But uh, you see them being there, stars and planets and white so luminaries they are there. Exist. Uh, I'm absolutely with you. The luminaries are there. The question is just, what are they? Uh, how far away are they? And are they space balls? That what else could they be? Yeah, that's what I don't know. I, I'm quite willing to, and I think every science person. I mean, should yeah, say, obviously, I don't know. obviously, from here we see them as uh, round shape. But for example, it, it could mirror. be an asteroid or something that's totally not round, but still it would be there. Sure, we we, we see. I'm, I'm not denying that we see luminaries that are disc shaped. Yeah, but the question really is. Um, we're told that we've gone there, we've landed on them, we've sent probes and all those things, and I, <laughs> I, I, I refuse to accept evidence that, that or, or just because 500 people have shown me a picture, yeah, or told me a story, because that for me is a leap of faith, yeah, but it's a belief. It's, it's the same a, as it's for me, but believing it is, so. But, I mean, Earth is told said to be a space ball. We are apparently hurtling through space, yeah? Yet we see the same constellations, you know, for thousands of years without them ever changing. Um, if you, if we're going around the sun, then when you're going around the sun on the other side, you, you should expect to be looking out that way, seeing different constellations, and when you're on this side, we don't. Um, so there's a lot of contradictions. Um, with the pressure, with the water, with the, how the stars are seen, to what we're being told. Do you, do you not think so? Constellations, for example, are different. I mean, there's different constellations that can be seen from the northern or south. Depending on where you are, yeah. sure. So it also has to do with the tilt of the axis of how the Earth spins, and uh, sure. you're obviously not going to see. Uh, stars that are normally seen in the southern hemisphere um, if you're not going there to see them because they cannot be on the northern hemisphere sky or uh, yeah that they are the same the same way you where also, you are there's also changes I mean the well, Polaris does time time for example is is a basic it, time is made by man so it's not necessarily a universal we made time and uh, we define everything by time so i think so. time is a natural quantity because i can measure heartbeats i can measure pulses i yes, can measure but, water drips uh, for sand example clogs. a human life is too short to measure uh, changes in the universe. It's the same, for example, um, with history. There's different time scales. For example, sure. historical time, geological time, which is totally a, a totally different scale. You cannot see, I don't know, a rock forming from sand in a hundred years. No, which is a human lifetime, let's say, which is too no, be a good too one, be a good lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it takes thousands of years for it to form. So that's why we cannot see or prove that uh, the universe is changing. So again, you're taking something on faith, then, right? I mean, sure. 
for as long as that's. Re I think my, 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 my side is not to convince you of something else, as I say, no, I, I don't mean, want to debate. You have, you have your opinion, I have my opinion, our beliefs. I think it's just important that people discern the difference between what is a belief yeah, and what is real science. Yeah? Sure. And I think very often that border is swum huh? um, back and forth without people actually realizing it. I mean, there's different people everywhere. I mean, there's people who don't even know the difference between right and left, to be blunt. So, obviously, if they don't, if they cannot discern which way is right and which way is left, why should they be able to discern scientific facts? Uh, observing it for yourself, maybe? Perhaps, but that's what, what I want to say, that everyone has their own opinion. Yeah, but, but you can't deny a fact, though, can you? If, you cannot. If there's a fact, like I usually use the analogy, there's three entities here at the moment, talking. Yes. Now, I think that's a fact, isn't it? Would you agree that's a fact? Sure. So, so we can fire agree. Fire is hot, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you put your hand in a fire, it'll burn. We sure. can all agree on that, yeah. Sure. And ice is cold, and you know. Yes. Yeah. So there are certain things where we actually have an observable, objective reality, and not just a subjective opinion, right? Definitely. And surely that has to be the basis then of our knowledge. What we can all agree is observable objective reality.